Hi, my name is N.K. Jemison, and this is my book, The Stone Sky. The Broken Earth is a secondary world fantasy, science fiction-y, science fantasy series in which um, the people of that world uh, have learned to endure the very frequent extinction level events that happen. And they've even developed various adaptations for surviving in that world, including some people have the ability to manipulate and control seismic magical energy. The story focuses on uh, a woman who is one of these people that has the ability to use seismic energy. It focuses on her quest to find her daughter after her husband discovers what she is, uh, what the kids are, uh, because they are like her, and kills their son and kidnaps the daughter. And this is a world where despite their phenomenal power, these people are persecuted and oppressed. When I was a kid, um, despite my father being an artist, uh, I had sort of absorbed the message from uh, other members of my family that you can't make a living as, as an artist, um, despite the fact that my father was making a living as an artist. And I had absorbed a kind of wider message, I'd guess, from society that uh, black women in particular could not uh, make a living doing writing or uh, specifically science fiction writing. Around the time that I was a teenager, of course, I discovered Octavia Butler, and that was great. That helped a whole lot. But even then, I think the, the, the message, the negative messages had sort of had their effect, and I was just convinced that, well, you know, it's fun to do for fun. Um, I can dip a toe in this, this business, but it's not really for me. It's not aimed at me. I don't belong here. You know, it really, none of that changed. I went on and, and got a career working in higher education um, and was perfectly happy until I basically had an early midlife crisis at age 30 um, and decided I'm going to try and try and finally find out whether my writing is, is worthy of publication. I've, I've told this story before, but I actually came pretty close to quitting the trilogy. There's a tendency for authors to get super excited about a new idea when they're when they first got it. You know, they get excited, their excitement kind of rises and rises as they're starting to work. And then the hard work of writing starts to kind of take its toll. And then they start to stress out and, and that excitement wanes and wanes and wanes until it hits this like rock bottom, <laughs> which uh, uh, author Kate Elliott calls the, the chasm of doubt. And so my chasm of doubt was epic. I threatened to uh, nuke the book off of my backups. I was, I was basically gonna scrap the, the three book idea and redo it as a one booker and then just kind of wash my hands of the whole thing. Despite the fact that I thought that it was a cool idea, despite the fact that I had gone to Hawaii to research volcanoes, despite the fact I was excited about nerding out over seismology and all these cool things, I had that moment still. So yeah, I mean, there was excitement, but the excitement kind of got almost washed away. Um, fortunately, I have really good friends uh, and my editor at the time kind of, you know, did the moonstruck snap out of it. Um, there's a lot of good characters in the story, I think, uh, characters who I fell in love with over the course of the writing, characters who I loved and hated in some cases. But Essen was the most complex character in the whole thing. Complex characters really do tend to interest me. I wanted to know more about her. I wanted to know how she ticked, how she got to be the person that she was, how she was gonna move on from being the person that she'd become, who was this PTSD erect survivor uh, who'd forgotten how to live. Essen is definitely my favorite character in the story. Um, Alabaster, though, became a close second. Alabaster laughs at things that are painful. Uh, I do the same thing. Alabaster is angry, but he learns how to cover that anger in ways that uh, allow him to survive in a system that doesn't really welcome his anger. And Lord knows I learned how to do that too. You know, I've reached a point in my life where I feel comfortable expressing that anger more, but it took a long time for me to get there. And I learned to use humor as a sort of deflecting thing, I think. So uh, in that sense, he's probably closest to me.